Since the start of the war in Gaza last year, there have been widely reported maritime disruptions along the Red Sea and the Suez Canal due to Yemeni Houthis launching attacks against shipping vessels they believe to be closely aligned with Israel or where they believe cargo is bound for Israel. As a result, major shipping carriers have had to change routes, incurring extra costs by going round the Cape Horn to safely deliver cargo to their destinations. These routes are critical for carriage of crude oil shipments out of Middle Eastern oil producing countries to destinations around the world. So with tensions now having gone up a gear, could we see major crude oil logistics bottlenecks? Well, I'm joined by Unati Sonti. He's an executive chairperson at the Maritime Business Chamber. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us. So it's been a tough year for the maritime industry already, with many shippers having to adapt to a new normal of possible attack. Just give us some reflections around the challenges that the sector has had to face and how it's been circumventing the situation oh good good, good afternoon to the viewers yes indeed um, the maritime shipping you know sector has been facing quite a number of challenges uh, if we are to reflect we would note that uh, the surge in terms of the shipping costs uh, as a result of the long route uh, that now comes via the Cape of Good Hope or the Cape Agalas. Um, the issues around the surge in the insurance now of the cargo goods, where with all these attacks on the ships, uh, there is no guarantee in terms of um, the one or in, probably the seller uh, of, the, of, of, of the goods and the buyer in terms of them getting uh, what they have purchased and the one who's selling. Uh, being able to transport uh, what they have sold. So there's quite been a number of challenges and and that does not only affect, you know, the shipping companies alone. We would note for, for, for the African continent uh, where we are, you know, importers, uh, quite a number of uh, goods that are supposed, uh, that are destined for, 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 our, for our region uh, would not be able then to arrive either on time or arrive at all. Yeah. So, Unati, there are concerns that if things do kick off between Israel and Iran, it could put a dampener on crude oil supplies out of Iran. But then Iran also has a lot of control over some of the key waterways around the Red Sea. Hence, they've been working with the Houthis uh, to disrupt certain shipping uh, that's linked to Israel. Is the industry concerned about this, especially as it relates to the movement of oil tankers? Indeed, the industry is is concerned, and you would note, in particular, if we were to talk about you know the likes of South Africa, uh, where we 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 are importers of fuel, and if you look at the country with the current gains that we have had with the decrease in terms of the price of fuel, uh, this is going to be one of those uh, biggest challenges uh, for, for, for us. But for the industry at large, indeed, you know, all of these tankers um, and also how that is going to also affect the environment. I think you sort of alluded to it earlier, but what's happening in terms of shipping rates, you know, the cost of being able to freight with a shipper from one place to another, and also insurance, have those premiums been going up and are they, are they likely to continue going up if things really do kick off in the Middle East? Indeed, the shipping price uh, has, has increased uh, since last year uh, when the attack started uh, with in, the, in, the, in the Red Sea. Um, and we have seen that most shipping companies factoring uh, now the extended route costs to the clients, meaning that is going to also to cascade to us as the end users of, 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 of those goods. And also, uh, insurance uh, has also, you know, has seen a surge uh, around April, May. It was reported that has gone up, you know, extremely very high, and it will continue to do that. Because remember, right now there's quite a number of things that one would have to factor, even with the opening of the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, there is also the security factor now that needs to be added within the cost of, 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 of shipping um, to mitigate the, 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 the risk of the attacks and also the possible risk now of an increased 
piracy activities. Yes. So what about, obviously, um, you know, you can't run away from it. There may be instances where vessels get caught up in, you know, in the crossfire. Uh, how concerned are you about environmental risks, you know, uh, oil tankers leaking or spilling f uh, fuel, uh, as well as ordinary, you know, shipping vessels that are trying to move around if they get caught up? Of course, you can never really repair environmental damage of those proportions. Indeed, you know it's a it's a it's a serious concern uh, for, for 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 the industry, especially now that we are also talking about the issues of decarbonisation. Also, it's an opportunity where we look at ways of uh, you know um, um, changing and as and 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 um, uh, escalating the issues that talks to you know marine eco-friendly uh, vessels or systems of, 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 of operations but in the meantime whilst we know majority of these vessels some of them they still have not met you know the IMO targets it means that all of that is going to affect the you know the the the, the marine ecosystem um, which now in fact like for instance if we are talking about South Africa for instance um, the high the, the high turnout now of these vessels coming via the Cape of Good Hope means a lot of things. Uh, the oil spills, do we have enough response for salvage? Number two, we have seen the containers that have been, you know, the cargo that's been, that has been falling off of, of vessels, of which those are increasing risks uh, in the communities. So there, there is a concern around that. And also, it also, you know, pushes us to be ready and gear ourselves for greater response around these issues. Yeah, Unati, thank you so much for your insights there. That was Unati Sonti. He's executive chairperson of the Maritime Business Chamber. We uh, continue.